Today's episode of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN, and Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com, and TradeHill.com, and MTGox.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is episode 28. I am Bruce Wagner, as and you know. And this is Manny Mena. And today we have uh, breaking news in the Bitcoin world. You know, as always, we're bringing it to you as it happens live. So we're doing a special edition um, at uh, whatever it is, 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Um, with us, we have the gang from Trade Hill, Jared Kenna. And, and Jared, you want inter- to introduce your cohorts there. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, Adam Stradling and Francisco Dagnino. Okay. Dagnino. Dagnino. There we go. Okay. So, um, tell us, guys. Tell us what's happening. Okay. Uh, basically, um, by doing our own internal audits, uh, we found out that Dwala is reversible. And uh, not only is it reversible, they don't tell you. So essentially, uh, over time, our statements have been changing, and uh, we wrote a program. Actually, did you write that or Mike? Uh, both of us. Okay, together. Exactly. Together, they wrote a program mm-hmm. that basically parses over time all of our Dwala statements and detects anomaly, anomalies and changes in the statements. So um, we found out that Dwala has basically secretly taken back $37,000 out of our accounts, which is um, users that made a transfer and it was showing credited in our system, and then Dwala, without telling us, just pulls the money back. Um, so we asked Dwala, and we said, is, is a, are there chargebacks? And they said, no. Uh, we said, are they reversible? And they said, no. So, um, so we asked them about this, and they, they basically ignored us and just blew us off. Um, so we approached them two weeks ago when we first started seeing this. Uh, initially, we just thought, hey, this is, this is our fault. We're, we're screwing something up here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we dug a little deeper, and we spent a lot of time thinking it was our mistake. Because if you audit based on their spreadsheets and their data, which continuously changes, it makes it look like you had a mistake. So, so basically, we tracked their data over time and uh, found out it's actually on their end. So... <sighs> At this point, we've been in touch with them, and they told us, and we have this, uh, we have documentation from them that says, if you receive an email from us saying it's credited, if you receive a CSV from us, it's credited. So we've been treating it as such and selling bitcoins to people. Now, after we implemented this system, we caught twenty-seven thousand dollars worth of fraud and prevented it. Uh, we've stopped people from doing this. Um, People were doing it on purpose. People have realized that there's a flaw in Dwala's system and that they can take back the transactions via ACH, and they're, they're specifically trying to game the system. And we have evidence from speaking to these scammers or trying to speak to them because once we figured out how they were doing it, we started blocking them and telling them they had to go on phone calls with us if they wanted us to approve their transactions. All of them declined, came up with horrible excuses, and then pulled back the transactions. Yep. And these transactions went from credited which means we're supposed to go ahead and put the money in our accounts back to pending. And anybody who's automated off of Dwala right now has been dealing with the same thing for the last two months. Because otherwise you have to go through manually on every single one. And people might have been wondering why things have been taking longer at Trade Hill. Well, that's why. Over the last two and a half weeks, we've been looking at every single Dwala transaction. We've created watch lists of these specific types of fraud that we see. And then all our guys are, watch, are, are using the watch list of the transactions that we see to be suspicious because we identified this and then we're blocking that, okay? And we didn't come out right away because we weren't sure it was them. So we wait and saw and collected information, caught some of these scammers today. And we actually asked Wallop over the last two weeks about specific transactions to give us data. And they've given us the runaround every single time. Exactly. We've tried to work with Wallop. We've tried to cooperate with them. We've sent them emails. We've called them. And they just ignored us the entire time. Yeah. We are, they're obviously, their second largest customer. Yeah. Their largest customer is Mount Gox. Uh, between us and Mount Gox, I would estimate we're 90 something percent of their volume, and they are willing to ignore us. Yes, yeah. In, in over two weeks, and we sent a specific transaction IDs, 
and they just said, go to the statements, go to the statements. Whatever's on the HTML is what you get. Well, those change over time. And we're, we're not even talking about what goes from pending to credited back to pending. We're just seeing mm -hmm. transactions completely disappear from our June statement. Right. Okay? That's a completely different error. So we, we, we've identified three different, at least three different types of errors that are occurring. Right. Two or three of them are fraud that people are perpetrating. The other two or three are just, we don't even know. We don't even know how they're happening. Exactly. Just, okay. Transactions are coming and going, coming and going. Let me, let, me, uh, let me just reiterate, I mean, uh, 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 give a little executive summary, first of all, because <laughs> there's a lot of information here. Um, so l tell me if I phrase this uh, correctly that what is happening, what you're saying is happening, is that Dwala is uh, processing trans transactions into Trade Hill and probably other merchants like Mt. Gox and so on, and then they give you a statement saying these transactions are pending and then these transactions have cleared, and then what's happening is the transa the, these statements are online in the form of a CSV file, and then they are actually retroactively changing the data on these reports so the transactions that have said they were cleared are now suddenly not cleared anymore they're pending exactly. again exactly it's normal to go from pending to credited it's not normal to go from credited to pending yeah right and that's what you're doing yeah and have you received any communication from Douala stating hey you know there's a discrepancy here uh let's try to get into some form of arbitration or anything of that nature not once except for Ten minutes ago, when we after we escalated this over the last four days, they said we need to speak to the CEO immediately. They never turn our calls. We called four or five times. We sent them the data again, explained exactly what was happening, and then we said we're going public with this. In five minutes, I get an, e C e uh, an email from Sharice, the COO, saying, "Okay, we can speak." Right. So mm -hmm. two weeks we got the cold shoulder, and then five minutes before we go public, we say we can speak. And if you'll notice, they also changed the stuff on their website to reflect new information. Right. Several right. hours ago. They several just, hours ago. Several hours ago, they just announced that it's reversible. Yeah. Okay. So this. Let me let me just play for the audience. Uh, I mean, there's a lot going on here. Oh, by the way, so one of the things that we learned is that um, what is it? Uh, the estimates of the percentage of Dwala's business that are coming from Mount Gox and the percentage that are coming from Trade Hill right now. Do we have? Basically, a in, a thread, in a thread just recently about Dwala, Mark stated that he did over six million in transactions in June. We did over one million in transactions in June, and we see the fraud increasing. Okay, and we had about a thirty-five thousand loss in June with a million in transactions. Right, in terms of uh, you know the, the the situation we saw with the takebacks. So if you multiply that out by six or seven times on thirty thousand, and given that people saw we were blocking this. Okay, mm -hmm. then you're talking a couple hundred thousand could be gots. Anybody else using Dwala, you you got to think three or four or five percent of their total volume right now. Three or four or five percent of their total volume could be being uh, reversed, like magically re yeah. uncleared. Yeah. Right, or it could be even worse if they've realized that they can get away with it and it's yeah. completely automated. I mean, I mean, it's a decent chunk with us, and we're catching it and we're stopping. We're stopping. Now, if he is catching it and he's stopping it. I want to know why the hell he didn't tell me. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Mt. Gox. So yes. we don't know if they're if he's even aware of this yet, or if he's catching it or stopping it. We know that Mt. Gox has an automated system to process their their Dwala. Now, if if Mt. Gox is using an automated script that processes these Dwalas that are coming in, it's not going to go back and retroactively check, most likely. Nope. And even if it did, how, what what is he going to take the money back away that's already been spent on bitcoins? Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. No, no, I, I think he doesn't know. And I, I can't blame him for that because this is this is absolutely crazy. This isn't something you'd expect from a reputable... Oh it's like well. it's like a bank, a, a trusted institution that it clears a check and once it's cleared and then later you don't find out in, in, unless you notice that the online statement changed before your very eyes. Exactly. Yeah. And in they the didn't notify you. They didn't notify you of anything. Yeah, it seems like what's happening here is um, that maybe, yes, ACHs are reversible, but the biggest problem is that A, they're not notifying you know, people at Trade Hill, and B, they're retroactively you know, changing statements. To so, I think the biggest thing is that they're telling people that they're not reversible. When I opened my Dwella account, um, they called me the very next day, and they said that, uh, you know, that welcome to, to Dwala and all that. And I asked them a lot of questions, and one of the things I asked them were, um, are these transactions reversible? I mean, after they clear, are they, can they be reversed? And he said, no, 
absolutely not. So I want to let's let's just take a break for a second. I want to play uh, a little bit of an excerpt of a call, a conference call that we made, that you guys made actually. The first one is uh, to Dwala just uh, just a few. Well, what was it? An hour or something before this broadcast. So let's play that and listen in. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! All right, can you can you leave me on the uh, on the line? The speaker is Ben. Is Ben Milne in too? You heard it. Okay, cool. So that's what happened. We couldn't get through, and um, the CEO wasn't available, and the COO wasn't available. This is a small little startup that has 12 people. I mean, I can imagine they're probably in a room the size of this set. I, I just don't understand why they're, they're absolutely inaccessible. All right. Then um, all of this uh, you know, came to light, and, and you guys decided to, to come out with this publicly. And right before we sat down to go on the air... I called again. I just called anonymously. I didn't say my name or anything, but I uh, called and I asked one simple question. Can, as a merchant, if I accept Dwala, can transactions be reversed? And let's listen to this conversation real quick. This is when, um, just a few moments before we sat down. Hello, this is Ben Berger with Dwala. How can I help you? Yeah, I just have a question. Uh, can, can Dwala, if I accept Dwala as a merchant, can transactions be reversed? Uh, or chargebacks occur? Uh, nope, nope, unless the bank uh, reports back that um, the insufficient funds, um, transactions are not uh, reversed. There's a dispute process that someone can file, but if that were the case, uh, you would definitely be notified of any dispute that is filed to be able to present uh, your site as well. Yeah, the only event that that would happen is if the bank reported that there was insufficient funds. Okay, so as long as the bank doesn't report su insufficient funds, then the transactions uh, cannot be charged back. Correct, sir. Okay, and what what is it? We we're talking about a dispute. Uh, what is that about? Yep. If if whoever sent the funds um, wants to file a claim saying that maybe they didn't receive the physical, um, I guess whether it's a service or a product, mm -hmm. and they want to file the claim that they didn't receive that, or, or you know they felt that they've been uh, cheated out of their they're part of the transaction, they're able to file a dispute, mm -hmm. and then that's arbitrated on our end, um, in which both parties can send in, you know, receipts and, and different kinds of, different kinds of uh, documentation that helps uh, discern kind of what the outcome is, mm -hmm. and in that both parties are notified and uh, given time to, you know, provide evidence, I suppose, towards both mm -hmm. both parties. Right, and then, but what's the purpose of that? If it, if a transaction clears, can it be reversed? Um, can it be if the, if the dispute um, is filed, and then it's found that um, you know the the sender was in the right? Um, in that case, it can be. But it's that's done through so through a process of both parties uh, acknowledging. Okay, so there is a chargeback then. Transactions are reversed in certain cases then, depending on your own Dwala's own arbitration of a dispute process. Is that what you're saying? Um, I believe so. This is what this is uh, what the dispute process has. Um. Okay, because when I first called, I said, "Can transactions be reversed after they after they clear?" And you said, "No." But now no, you're saying the exact opposite. No, sorry, I should have clarified. Then I meant no in case there was a unless there was a dispute or uh, the banks have filed that there was a mistake on the transaction or insufficient funds. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because now you're saying like way the opposite. Because what I said was, can transactions be reversed? And you said no. And then later you said, not unless the bank reports insufficient funds. And I now you're saying, not unless the bank reports non sufficient funds, or the bank disputes it, or the sender disputes it, or what? What else? I mean, other. It sounds like there's a lot of possible ways that a transaction could be reversed after it's cleared. 
even though when I asked you, can transactions be reversed after they're cleared, you said no. Sorry, I meant to go on and, and inform you of the other methods uh, where that would not be the case. So you meant to say yes, right. absolutely, in many, many possible cases. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In okay. Use. So even though I asked you, can transactions be reversed after they cleared, and you said no, the fact is they absolutely can, and they are routinely. Is that right? Um, routinely, I don't think that's the case. Um, if, if a dispute is filed, that's, you know, a matter that's taken up with, with corporate, and then in that event, it's, you know, it's disputed, and if it's reversed, it's because of um, the claim is found, you know, on the benefit of uh, the sender. I'm sorry, what was the last thing you said? If the claim is found, you know, to, oh, the claim. I, guess, I guess, the dispute, mm -hmm. dispute that's filed. Okay, and what what's the um, what's the process for um, resolution of a dispute? Yeah, I mean, who is in charge of uh, arbitrating that dispute? Um, typically, um, our COO and our CEO of Douala. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so they personally I believe, have. I they confer. I believe they confer with the legal team as well. I see. Okay, so basically, it's the same thing as any credit card or PayPal or anything else. Um, if Douala, in its sole uh, decision-making authority, determines that they side in favor of the purchaser instead of the merchant, then the transaction can, will be reversed as a chargeback, just like PayPal or MasterCard or Visa or credit cards, right? Um, yep, to my knowledge. Okay. Yes. So would you agree that it's absolutely inappropriate when someone calls you and asks you, can, can charges uh, be reversed after they've cleared? It'd be absolutely inaccurate and inappropriate to say no. That is correct, sir. I apologize okay. for my mistake. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Okay. So, as you can hear, yeah, the chat room is uh, commenting shady things going on at Douala. Now, the interesting thing is, like, right after that conversation, we came in here to do this show live, and I sat down, and I turned on my laptop, and... And interestingly, now remember, when I called, I didn't say my name. I, hadn't, I didn't tell them my name, my account number, nothing like that. I mean, I don't know if they recognized my voice or, or maybe they got the caller ID. I don't know. But anyway, I sat down here and I got this email. If you want to flip over to my screen, you see I got an email right away like within three minutes of, of actually uh, placing that call from Dwala Support. And uh, it's actually the same gentleman I spoke to, Ben Murga. He says, Bruce, please, uh, let me, uh, uh, please allow me to apologize for my misunderstanding about how returns work. After speaking with my COO, which must have been in the last three minutes, by, mind you, because this was like a three-minute time lapse here, I can confidently share with you what we have in our terms and conditions. Returns. The receiving party of a transaction may be subject to chargebacks occur occurring within the account if claims are made by, sending, by the sending party or by the financial institution. In the event fraud occurs, funds may be reversed and arbitration will begin with both parties. Thank you for your patience, etc. So what's interesting about this is that um, that's now in the terms of service. And I want to, I mean, this is something that we discovered. Actually, Manny did this research. And uh, if you flip to my screen, Ed, there you'll see that we went, we used the Wayback Time Machine, or no, actually Google's Google cache. cache. Okay, yeah. Google's cache. And you can see at the top of the screen, if I can make it a little bit bigger, um, this is from July 21st, a snapshot of their uh, support center. And you see in the top right area over here, transaction information, six articles. There's no, there's no articles here whatsoever in their FAQ or support about transaction reversals. If you open it up, you can see these are the six, six items there. Uh, nothing about transaction reversals. But if you, um, if, uh, there's only one thing. There's a comment June 28th. Uh, somebody asked, how does Dwella protect me as seller from chargebacks? And uh, Ben Milne, the same person, says, please let me know the specific scenario in question and we'll outline the procedures for disputes. But that's like a comment, question, answer, but it, there, was, there was nothing in this support. Now, if you look at the current version, can you see that? Bring it up. You bring, uh, bring up the current version of the support center. As of today, there are eight articles. And if I open those up, you'll see that suddenly, out of these eight, two of them are specifically about why was my transaction reversed? And if a transaction was reversed, what can I do? So um, 
you know, if I open one of those up, you'll see, you'll see, notice that they're all dated today. Um, yeah. July 25th, 237 p.m. Central Time, reclaim transaction processes and procedures. So this was all added today. So <laughs> let me reiterate, I want to recap a little bit for the audience that, that are, are just joining us right now because uh, they're like, what? If they join late, they don't know what's going on. Here's the, the bottom line is that Dwala has claimed from the beginning that transactions cannot be reversed on Dwala. And uh, once it clears, it clears like a check. However, what's happening apparently is uh, that the merchant, in this case, Trade Hill, for example, tradehill.com, is getting a statement that is supposed to be a fixed statement that shows act this is what happened. Uh, transactions are listed as pending until they're cleared. And once they cleared, they're, they show what resolved or cleared or something like that. And once they once they clear, they're supposed to be cleared. But what's happening is without any arbitration, without any contact whatsoever, they're saying that the statements just reverse and transactions go back into a pending state. And not only that, but clusters of transactions are absolutely disappearing from the statement. Is that true? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, if I recall from the conversation, um, he stated that uh, he would have to receive an affidavit as part of the process. And um, have you guys received, you said you haven't received any sort of communication from Dora regarding these, right? No, no, whatsoever. We found these ourselves. Yeah. I believe the only reason that this has been brought to light is because we found it. And we've been escalating over the last two or three days saying directly that these are the transaction equation. This is what we think is happening, and you need to have a conversation with us immediately to discuss this. And we've been cold shouldered the entire time until basically they felt like we were going to <laughs> go public with it today. And now mm -hmm. they're changing their stories, they're changing their stuff online. And it, it's, I think it's pretty obvious what's happening here. Let me, I'm going to go through this uh, PDF. You created a little slideshow for us. Let's, let's go through that real quick. Um, it, you've, you've got here errors and bad data from Dwala. Uh, this is from you guys at Trade Hill. We have been told by Dwala numerous times that if we receive a CSV or email from them showing an account credited that is non-reversible and will not change. And now you've got here uh, an example, July 11th, transaction ID 169552 shows credit. And you can see uh, so obviously the names are uh, blurred for privacy, but you can see there clearly that transaction 169552 shows credit in the first column. Okay, and then uh, July 11th, and this is the same day, sends, uh, Dwella sends confirmation email for this transaction, same thing, person, the uh, account number, and so on, that this uh, has cleared. And the pending payment is now complete, it says. And that's the email you received. Okay, then July 14th, which again is three days later, transaction 169552 reverts to a pending status. The same account, the same transaction ID and everything reverts to a pending status. And uh, <laughs> obviously they say this can't happen. But this is happening on a, on a rep repetitive basis. Now you say prevention. Trade has written a program to compare Dwala CSV files, that's basically a, a file format for the statements you receive, over time and detect fraud. We have been manually screening all Dwala, which uh, has caused delays, of course. We have detected $37,000 in fraudulent transactions that have occurred and 27000 you guys prevented. The actual amount prevented is much higher due to the criminals most likely moving on to other targets. And that's not really good either because that means they're moving on to all the other exchange sites that accept Dwala. Yeah. And now you've got a summary of Dwala transfers. Okay, and um, <laughs> wow, that, that's just mind-blowing. If, if, it's, if it's affected, you guys, what do you think it, I mean, what do you think the total in uh, fraudulent transactions that have been reverted is... Um, in total, that, not just for the one month. You have an estimate of that? Yeah. Well, I mean, are you, are you talking about with just us, or are you talking about with... Well, Ross? both. Just you, Ross. and then what would you estimate uh, another, you know, the others, like Mount Gox is more than half well, of Dwella's I mean, business, right? We're going we're gonna to have to see. They're going to have to audit, and they're going to have to find out. I mean, I don't want to assume that they've got them, but uh, if they're getting hit equally compared to volume, um, it could be a few hundred thousand easily. Um, Easy. And if they're getting away with it, and they <laughs> if they're getting away with it, and they know they're not going to get caught, and they can keep repeating yeah. it, um, 
it could be millions even. Um, yeah. It's it's really hard to say. Now maybe he has some. I hope he has some system in place it, just preventing this it, or doing some. Maybe Mark and automated, which we know it is, right? His mm -hmm. transactions go instantly. That's what everybody says with Walla, and that's why everybody likes Walla. Mm -hmm. Is there's no way that his automated program is going out the same CSVs, which say credited, go for if they say credited, and then the account gets credited. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it goes from credited then to pending, the account's already been credited in mm -hmm. Antigox's system. Which means that people go buy bitcoins and, and take off of them. And mm -hmm. we have caught people trying to do this. And we've locked about 30,000 worth of fraud in, in the last two weeks. And, and also, yeah, and that's why we're doing everything manually. You know, yes. and, and people said our things were slowing down, but we wanted to collect evidence. We wanted to see what was going on. We wanted to make sure our numbers were correct and see how it was actually perpetrated. We have emails from fraudsters who say, release my funds, release my funds. And we're saying, no, we say, you have to have a call with us and they won't go on call. And then, what do they do? They reverse the transaction. So they figure out where the, the problem is in the wallet system, and then they execute it when they know they're not going to get the money, and the transaction gets reversed. Exactly. And also, we've noticed, since we started blocking this, uh, there's a few smaller exchanges that just start taking Dwala yeah. that are, are blowing up. And they're getting all kinds of volume coming in through Dwala and then turned into Bitcoins. Yeah. And I'm wow. really hoping that they don't just completely lose out on this. Yeah, because that, that volume isn't real. It's it's fraudulent. So it's it's fake dollars that are coming in, and they're they're issuing real bitcoins, and then they're gonna get. And the the, the the saddest thing of all, I mean, obviously these are these are uh, criminal fraudsters, you know, wherever they are, um, hackers basically. But the uh, the scariest thing of all is that the exchange site, if any of these exchange sites that are not as sharp as you guys, that are actually comparing the statements over time from uh, yesterday to today, last month to today, they're not going to notice. They're not even going to know that they were swindled. So they could be receiving uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars in, uh, in Dwala that's coming in. They're issuing Bitcoins and, and selling them, and they won't even know that they were swindled until it's way too late. Exactly. And they'll probably notice because if you have $50,000 and then you check it the next day and you have ten. They're going to notice something happened. Yeah. I mean, we were doing millions of dollars, so it's easy to miss thirty-four thousand. Yeah. But, oh my um, gosh. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's audit. But that's what we did. And, that's and, like and two and a half percent of your volume in this fraud. Is that right? About two and a half percent. Anybody for us? Wallet, for yeah. us, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the big thing was is we asked. I mean, first off, we asked Wall on page. We we explained the situation. We said we see hey, uh, things going from pending to credited to pending. That's not supposed to happen, correct? They right. sure no, 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 no. Where are the transactions? We sent them the transaction IDs, and they never sent us data. They never got it back to us on those transactions. They've been stonewalling us. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why we, we, we were going to just want to talk and deal with them about it, and hopefully they can fix, this, fix the system. But they were willing to deal with us. Exactly. So. And I, I can't ethically, and neither can these guys, just, yeah. just keep this quiet when uh, it could be ruining other people's businesses. Yeah. It could be ruining people's lives. And it, if they would just talk with us, we'd be willing to work with them. But yeah, really that's not out. cool. I mean, to me, that's the most damning thing is when you have a tiny, tiny little startup like Dwala and you can't answer the phone and you can't take a call. And then when they recognize my voice or my name or something like that, then immediately I get an email. It's so disingenuous. And I, I'm looking here. Uh, okay, this is Ben Murga Dwala support that actually, okay, so it's two different Bens, but there's a Ben Murga of support, but he has no way to reach the other Ben who's the CEO and founder. And, and show my screen there, you'll see, um, I, I googled Dwala CEO, and I don't know what to make of this. This is Des Moines Register.com, which is their local paper in Des Moines. Uh, Dwala CEO says, I'm the dumbest guy in the room. Ben Milne, Dwala's, Dwala's founder and CEO, credits his success to sweat, not smarts. I'm the dumbest guy, guy in the room, says Milne, who spoke to a business innovation zone. He says uh, he dropped out of University of Northern Iowa after one semester to start his own speaker business. The ITBS uh, said, I would be in special classes for slow kids. You know, I, I don't understand um, this guy uh, not being able to answer the phone, not being able to answer calls. When you've got, like I was saying, basically, if, if I understand the numbers correctly, they only have three customers. This Dwala really only has three customers. They've got Mt. Gox, which is the vast majority of their business. Then they got Trade Hill, and then they got everybody else, which is like a drop in the bucket compared to Mt. Gox and Trade Hill. They've got three customers, and they can't answer a call. This is, uh, this is bad. And as you heard in that call we placed earlier, or we played earlier, where I called, because I, I wanted to ask, 
And remember, the very first day I opened my Dwala account quite some time ago, that was one of the questions I asked because I was really concerned because I understand they're using ACH. Mm -hmm. And isn't it true they have like a 60-day, uh, what do you call it, uh, chargeback liability? 180 and they, days. Oh, yeah, okay, I hear varying reports of 180 days or 60 days. But anyway, the, uh, I wanted to know, is it really true that these transactions, once they're cleared, they can't be reversed? And they said, absolutely not. And as you heard, just moments before the broadcast, I called and they said the same thing. And now, immediately when he recognizes my voice, he uh, replies that he just, t actually, that was the CEO. No, 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 that was support who said that he spoke to the COO. Uh, somehow he magically reached the CEO when no one has been able to, when you guys haven't been able to for a week. They're not returning your call, they're in a meeting, they're unavailable. You know, it's just so disingenuous. It's really, really shady. Yeah. Um, it looks like Dwa is FDIC like say, you know, insured. I mean, this is a new business, a nascent industry, and people are going to make mistakes. Right. And the key thing is remedying your mistakes, making right by your customers, admitting them, and then don't making them again. And then not making gain any mistakes. So all probably just two million in revenue a year, and this could add up to three or four hundred thousand dollars, okay, or, so, mm -hmm. or worse. And if they realize that, it could be game over. That's a lot to recover from. We yeah. made our own mistakes. We will tell you right now, we made some mistakes with people, mm -hmm. but we did our audit, and it's definitely not game ending. And we have redundancy built in our system that have changed your system to nullify and negate those mistakes. You go into any casino, you have double counts, triple checks. Online casinos is a big thing with them. Right, is giving their audits, but what do they do? Double, double process, triple check. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's ways. And if you make a big error like that, and we make a big error like that, and it, it, it destroys our business, we'll walk out. But we'll come public with it. We'll, we'll tell the people yeah. about it, and that's it. It's just how we do it. Exactly. The public we'll go back to our little principles, which we put on who we are. Mm -hmm. I think the public is forgiving when people are honest. Um, and they're upfront about it and they explain what happened and it was a mistake and, it, and we, we've done this to correct it and you know it's not going to happen again and these are the steps we're taking and all that. But when you just kind of like brush it under the rug and you don't take calls and you hide, play hide and seek from a phone that's in the same room as you and all that nonsense for a week, you're unreachable in a little tiny startup with you know just a couple guys, it, doesn't, it just doesn't bode well for your credibility the credibility of a company like Dwala that's trying to make a niche. I mean, every, uh, the whole Bitcoin community really has uh, come around Dwala and supported Dwala. We, we're really appreciative of the technology and the ease of use of their service. But, you know, it's all about trust. And the bottom line is it's all about trust. And when you go back and, and you know, for whatever reason, even if it is uh, supposed disputes or something, you don't even contact people, you're incommunicado, and you just alter statements without notifying people, that's just fraud. I mean, basically, that's, isn't that the definition of fraud, is when you deceive people and there's a reasonable person would not, um, you know, be, would, would, be a, a reasonable person would absolutely consider that fraud. Because, you know, to, ta to take a statement that's supposed to be unsta unchangeable, and even according to their own terms of service and their own FAQs, um, that can't happen. And they even told you, didn't they tell you verbally in phone calls that that can't happen? Yep. And, and that's just on the reversibility of transactions. I mean, no matter what statement you ever get for your bank from June, it shouldn't change. No. I remember there was one time when we were created our watch list. I was just sitting there looking into HTML, okay? And we had basically over 200 grand in deposits. Right? And then all of a sudden, I refresh, and it goes to 199 So how do you go from over 200 While you're watching it. <laughs> this is credited. Then all of a sudden, 199 So I just caught that one right there, and that's another one that's on the list of transactions. We have about 20 of these. We caught two today, two scammers today trying to do the same thing. Also, I want to say, um, I mean, we take privacy very seriously. The, the individual name that you saw on there, um, Patrick Cardenas, that's one of the scammers. So uh, we, we block out everybody else's name. Right. So you won't see any other names here. We're not going to throw anybody else's names out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're assuming that's not a real name, but it is definitely one of the one of the fraudsters. Have you had any contact with any of these fraudsters? Have they? I mean, they've emailed you and asked you to release their funds. Have you had any like dialogue with them? Yep. Actually, that one in particular, I had emails from him saying, "Why has my money been credited?" We said, "We're having issues with Guala. We need to speak with you on the phone. You get to settle." And he says, "Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it." Literally three days excuses why he couldn't go on the phone. And then finally, it was like eight grand, right? So if he was cool with this, he would just get on the phone, explain his situation, we give him his money. Right. And then what did he do? He keeps making excuses. I said, look, I'm not giving you this money until you get on the phone and speak with me. Why? Because he's afraid we're going to Skype record it. And so then what happens? 
He stops sending emails. Two days later, pulls back the transaction. It goes from credited to pending. Because we, we, credit, we didn't credit, we credit the account, right? But we didn't allow them to withdraw, right? And so he said, why can't I withdraw? Why can't I withdraw? And yeah. we said, we need to speak to you on the phone. We think there could be an issue. So you can see why these people, they're doing that on purpose. For instance, when they know they're going to they're, they're, they're pull back a transaction from Gowalla, they wait for the, for the merchant, either us or Gox, to credit the account. And then within 10 minutes, they'll buy as many Bitcoins as they can, make a withdrawal, just trying to get out really quick with the money. And, and basically, these are the intentional. People are doing it intentionally. Now, there's a whole other class of errors, which is just like we were saying, where the statement just changes, transactions just go missing. So those, I don't know what those are, where those are coming from. Have but, they ever responded you know, to that? The transactions just go missing? I mean, have you... Miss- have you contacted them about those transaction numbers and, yes. and what's up with this? Yep. We gave them those transactions too. We gave them a list of about eight transactions, ones that were in description of what was happening. And this was four or five days ago, the different error types and the transaction IDs. And we've been stonewalled all the way up until you call Bruce and we send an email saying, if you don't speak to us, we're, we're going public with this. Yeah. And then I get an email right away. Well, you know, uh, I mean, startups right are away. startups. Right we said 20 minutes, it was 40 minutes. We said 20 yeah. minutes, it was 40 minutes. Yeah. We had already started with you at this point. And it, it wasn't, and to clarify, it wasn't an email saying, there's a, there's a big problem here, we're going to fix this, and we're going to make it with the customers. It was basically, we'll look into this, which is what we'll we look into we it. Yeah. It's and, taken uh, all this weeks and weeks to come out and say, we'll look into it after they're already told that you're gonna, we're going to talk about this on the air. You know, the thing is, okay, startups are startups, small companies can explode with growth, and systems can break, and all those things human beings understand. I mean, we do understand that those things happen, no matter how perfect the platform you may think it is. But what's not forgivable, in my book, is when you go incommunicado, when you cannot be reached, and you hide behind a keyboard, or worse, you don't answer your phone, you don't reply to emails at all, and you just disappear, because that is disingenuous. To me, that shows a lack of integrity. It shows that you're not standing by. I mean, you, you've got to say something. And, and you know, to, to, to wait weeks and weeks and send an email that says, we'll look into it, that's just not okay. You can't have two weeks worth of meetings about this and not have made a decision about what you're going to do about it. Not only that, they have a unique position in the Bitcoin community. They could have really, really capitalized on this and become one of the fastest growing companies. Well, they have. They have. The majority, the vast majority of their business is the Bitcoin community. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to say about this, this is, I mean, obviously this is devastating and it could be game over for Dwala. That's Dwala's problem. But the thing is that it's really devastating to the Bitcoin community because it doesn't, this, this event does not affect just one exchange. This event, event ex- affects all the exchanges that accept Dwala. And this could absolutely be a crippling blow, if not, you know, a, the deadly blow well, to a lot of these exchanges. Right. So let's, let's talk about what are we going to do about this? I mean, we need to do something as a community. Uh, if if Trail stops accepting Dwala, and, well, first it depends. I mean, it depends on what Dwala is going to do about it. That's a big thing. But uh, we cannot continue to use Dwala like this. It's too, it's too intensive. There's no. too many mad hours to, to manually verify everything. And it's not completely reliable. Yeah. I mean, we, we might have something pulled back even later. So, um, I think Dahl would probably be more willing to speak with us now. And uh, I want to talk with uh, Magical Tux, uh, Mark from Mount Gox, and um, see what we're going to do. Um, and the other exchanges as well. I don't think it's, we can't, we can't accept this at this point. No. Um, well, you so, can't. I mean, you can't afford that. Uh, I mean, I don't think you're making enough profit yeah, to lose 2.5% of your revenue to, to fraud and, and have no recourse. And if, and if you, <laughs> I mean, and also the time, if you have to manually verify every single one, well, you may as well take Visa. You know, yeah. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So we're open to suggestions. We're open to talk about this. Uh, we're going to put a post on this on our blog, tradehillblog.com. And um, let's talk about it. Let's see where yeah. we go from here. We're open yeah. to speak with Walla. We're open to speak with uh, Mark. I mean, we have a friendly relationship with them. We're competitors, but, uh, you know, I mean, we're all in this Bitcoin thing together. Yeah. And we want to work together. Yeah, we're all in the same Bitcoin boat. So um, what about, let me just ask you this. Why not, you guys have a U.S. bank account for wire transfers, right? Why not just use uh, U.S. wire transfers and, and recommend to people a list, like recommend to USA residents a list of banks that don't charge for wire transfers. You walk into that bank and open a checking account, and uh, then you can send the, uh, send the wire transfer at no cost. 
I think we've lost the connection. Okay, we're going to get him back. Um, we're, right, we're bringing it back. Oh, there you are. You're back. Okay, cool. So, uh, Ed, move that mouse across. So, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. We got we lost the connection there, Skype. So, now what I was saying is, um, why not? I mean, you have a USA bank account, right? And you accept wire transfers. So, I mean, this is just my my uh, question, hypothetical, I guess. Um, why not just uh, give people a list of all the banks in the U.S. that you know of that don't charge for domestic wire transfers and say, walk into one of these banks, open a checking account, and then do domestic wire transfer um, for free. It's even, if it's free, it's even cheaper than Douala, and it's probably faster than Douala. It's great. I'll actually, I'll just take it one step further. I'll say, uh, use ING Direct. I think they're a great bank. ING like Direct. Them. They're free. Dual charges a quarter, it's cheaper with ING Direct. Um, so can anybody, how do you open a bank account with ING Direct if you live in Des Moines? Yeah. You just go online? Yeah, you can do it online. Oh, it okay. Online. And there's no charges, you can do domestic transfers, it's free? They do free ACH in and out. They don't do wires, it's the only downside. But uh, their customer service is amazing. I call them and uh, I just had a great time using them. And I, uh, wholeheartedly recommend them. Now wait a minute. <laughs> if they're doing ACH, aren't you going to run into the same problem as Dwala? <laughs> we'll need to look into that. I'm going to get on the phone with the bank. I'm going to talk with the bank and see. We'll, I like, we'll I like I checks and wire transfers. If you're not yeah. going to do cash, checks and wire transfers because as far as I know, old-fashioned paper checks and wire transfers can't be reversed. Right, right. And, you know, this isn't something we can really solve in, you know, right now. So mm -hmm. we're going to definitely, I'll speak with the bank and I'll ask them about the ECHs. I'll ask them if there's any way we can prevent fraud on that. Um, and we'll just, I think as a community, we're going to have to decide where we're going to go with this. Right. Uh, I really, really like the idea of Dwala. I was really impressed with Dwala this whole time until this happened. Yeah. Which is, it's really been a big disappointment for me. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, I think it's... Uh, I don't know. It's hopefully we'll find an alternative. Um, it, it, we'll work on it. We'll, well yeah, once again, it's it's not Bitcoin's fault. This is the thing we got to make clear. You know, when these things happen to cloud-based businesses, um, entities, you know, whether it's an exchange site or whether it's a dweller or whether whatever it is, it's not the Bitcoin network. People lose confidence in Bitcoin, like oh, Bitcoin has been hacked again. Mm -hmm. But it's really nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's just like. Um, you know, it's like if a, if a bank, you know, gets robbed across the street, that doesn't, it doesn't destroy uh, the U.S. dollar. You know, it's just one particular incident with one particular entity. So it's not really about Bitcoin at all. It's about these players that are, are just happen to be exactly. important. Exactly. Yeah. And it's actually the startup Bitcoin company that found the problem with the traditional financial system. Right, so yeah. One thing, one thing I think is interesting, this could not happen with Bitcoin. We, right. we don't have our backs. It's impossible. The network wouldn't allow it. Wouldn't it be better if everything was Bitcoin? Let me, on that note, let me take, just take a minute because I have to thank our sponsors, obviously. Um, these are the guys that bring us to you every day, and we, we really, really appreciate their support. And so uh, please you know, patronize their services and thank them for sponsoring us. Uh, and they are usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN. Uh, Andy Gauss uh, is our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins. To diversify your investments, don't leave them all in Bitcoin. Uh, contact Andy at 1-800-HOT-COIN, very accessible. He's not like Dwala. You call him and he answers. He is absolutely accessible and he'll answer your questions. You don't have to be a customer or buy anything from him. Just call him up and ask him about your, you know, your house is in foreclosure. He'll, he's an unbelievable um, monetary historian and um, money expert. So that's usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN, and if you're in the U.S., or usgoldcoins with an S dot com. And Meze Grill, of course, the world's first brick and mortar restaurant that accepts Bitcoin. They're right here, three blocks south of Columbus Circle at 8th Avenue and 55th Street in New York City. And they're now serving breakfast where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. We love Meze Grill. Go there a few times a week. M E Z E Grill.com and TradeHill.com. You've probably heard of them. They are <laughs> the, the premier exchange site and um, you know online exchange service for buying and selling bitcoins obviously many ways to get your money in and out um, so as we're discussing today I won't make any comments about that but um, anyway 10% uh, off your trade fees for life with the referral code TH-R141 and um, their goal is always to make buying and selling bitcoins as fast and cheap as painless as possible 
So uh, as we work through these issues with Douala. All right, and uh, finally, Mt. Gox, mtgox.com. Uh, obviously, also the online exchange service for Bitcoins. They have a two-factor authentication with YubiKey now. They now take uh, euros, Great Britain pounds, and Australian dollars, Canadian dollars coming any day soon, and continuing fees of 0.3% uh, through August 9th. So we thank all these guys for supporting the Bitcoin show and Only One TV and um, bringing us to you. So... You know, this could have been avoided, essentially, if they would have just tried to reach out a little bit of speed. Exactly. To try to come to some sort of result, because for any business, this is very serious for any company to take it that lightly and try to get signed. Right. Exactly. That's the thing. You know, I always say, no matter what you do, uh, no matter what you do, you absolutely have to communicate. Communication is key in any kind of relationship, but in business, uh, as much as any other, it, it's even if you mess up, you've got to communicate. Communicate, be honest, be transparent, apologize when you make a mistake and correct it. But when you go incommunicado and you just disappear, um, that just is not good. Um, so, uh, uh, Julian is uh, emphasizing from the chat room, he thinks the point needs to be uh, re-emphasized that this cannot happen with Bitcoin. Bitcoin cannot happen because there are no such things as chargebacks. It, uh, transactions are irreversible and um, there are you know, no transaction fees and all that. If, if we could just buy Bitcoin with Bitcoin somehow, that would be the answer. <laughs> if everybody had enough Bitcoins, we wouldn't have this problem. That darn U.S. dollar. <laughs> so, so what are we going to do about this? We we don't know. We can't just, solve it today. Uh, growing pains with Bitcoin, basically. You know, we just need to find a happy medium, and eventually, Bitcoin's going to evolve to a point where it's going to be ubiquitous, and you know, we have a in the Right. Once everybody has enough Bitcoin, it won't be really an issue. But for now, there, it's it's the bridge of the U.S. dollar to the Bitcoin, and obviously that's what exchange sites are all about. But getting the U.S. dollars and the euros and so forth into the exchanges has always been the problem. You know, with Mastercard, Visa, PayPal, nightmares, fraud. You know, the, the fraudsters and the hackers always get in. And uh, you know, and then the, and the reversible transactions. This is the legacy of the old economy: reversible transactions. You just can't buy cash with credit cards. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, if you buy something at Macy's and you on your credit card and you return it, they're not going to give you cash back. You know, and people don't understand. I mean, I guess consumers don't really get it that they're going to, you know, that they can reverse your transaction six months later. But I always, I always wondered that from day one. I didn't. I just kept asking, "Are you sure these transactions, once they're cleared, they can't be reversed?" No, they can't be reversed. They said. And I was like, okay, well, I hope so. <laughs> I just hope for the best, you know. But um, I can't really say that I'm surprised that this is happening. But what I am really surprised about is how irresponsibly they are uh, uh, acting about taking your phone call, returning your phone call, and public dis publicly disclosing what's going on. And when transactions, assuming that that's what's happening, that these transactions are being disputed, that they're not communicating that to the merchant and just changing the statement after it's printed, <coughs> just wrong, just wrong. So, um, I don't know, um, let's see what the chat room is saying. Even checks can be reversed in the USA. The checks, Taylor says checks can be reversed in the USA, is that true? Um, from my understanding, depends, yeah. If it's a fraudulent check, it will be, it will be reversed. Um, Are you sure? I thought I had yeah. read that it can't be. There is, there's a lot of fraud, fraud with checks. Well, yeah, there's a lot of frauds, but once, once a check clears, I mean an e-check, yes, which is basically mm -hmm. ACH, but a regular paper check, I thought that couldn't I, be reversed. I've had this happen to me once. I've literally had a check from PNC Bank from a business account while that bank had enough funds clear for about four to five days. And then after that period, they reversed it and my account over withdrew the amount of the check plus $35 for each transaction plus the amount of the transactions. And was that a direct deposit? No, it was a check that was written a to A paper me, check. A paper check. I Whoa. cashed it in. The funds were available after three days. And then another three days later, it was completely reversed and my account was over withdrawn, a crap load of money. And mm. I still have to pay that. And that's why I don't use bank accounts anymore. <laughs> Cash is king. All right. So what do you guys say? What, what, what are you going to do about this? Where, what's, the, what's next? 
Well, I mean, well, for now, we'll, we'll, we just, uh, we're going to have to hold uh, accepting deposits uh, through the wallet. Um, but I, I want all our, all our users, uh, don't, don't, don't worry, we, uh, we will be able to cash you out in the, in the meantime. Um, we can use um, wire transfers, uh, bank transfers uh, in the U.S. Uh, well, Duala even out. Uh, it's just that for now we can't accept deposits until we sort this out uh, with Duala or, or for different needs. So you're not gonna. So you've already have you already stopped um, uh, 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 funding depositing via Duala at this point? Uh, uh, we're doing it right now. Yeah. yeah. Right now. Yeah, I mean, I, that's I would too. I don't blame you at all. I mean, you just can't. That's just crazy. I mean, two and a half well, percent I mean, of uh, your volume. There's potentially a lot of losses out there. Well, I know we our losses are confirmed um, yeah. with uh, the, the transactions that have been that are errors on Dwala's side. Oops, we lost him again. How many other exchange sites actually accept Dwala? I think there's. They're just the U.S. There. ones, right? Because mm -hmm. Dwala's only in the U.S. Yeah, it seems like um, well. Yeah, not only that, but it seems that if you're doing the accounting, either if you're using an automated Dwala system or you're doing the accounting using Dwala's info, mm -hmm. if you don't have a system like Trade Hill, it might you know pass through the cracks. So the uh, yes, yeah, Skype seems to be about as reliable as Dwala. About two and a half percent of the time, we lose you. But anyway, you're back. So I was at, I was saying, like, how many other exchange sites are you guys aware of that actually accept Dwala right now? I think I think most or all of them do. Well, I mean, I'm not. U.S. based. Anybody taking USD? There's at least uh, three other who who just started, um, and then of course Gox has has been taking them for a long time. Uh, so at least four or five for USD, U.S. based, uh, U.S. based business. Yeah, I mean I want to be really clear about Mount Gox. Though I mean we don't want to say that they're down a bunch on Dwala. I mean I don't want to. They need to audit, and I'm sure that they're looking into this if they haven't already. And I definitely don't want to accuse them of being negative a bunch of money. So right. let them do their thing. And but we don't know. Yeah, we can't comment because we don't know. But we want to alert exactly. them. I mean, everybody, <laughs> obviously, if they're not watching this show, everybody should email all the exchange sites and say, hey, 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 heads up. Have you seen what you know this episode and what's happening with Dwala? And so that they audit their Dwala um, income. I mean, I hope they're keeping these records that they can go back and then... Re do those CSV files stay online, like... Forever, even if they are changing. Well, I mean, you can you can always download a previous month's statement, but but, but, but even then, we found uh, an, I think it was about five days ago. Uh, we we've been downloading uh, those CSVs uh, three times a day, and uh, I think it was about five days ago that we discovered that on our June statement that was supposed to be closed, uh, there were two outgoing transactions that were missing. Mm -hmm. And they're just nowhere to be found on the on the file, which uh, I don't know. To me, I really hope it's just a, a bug in their uh, reporting mechanism, and and that we can sort it out, you know, easily enough um, with you know whatever update they, they, they need to do on their system. I really hope yeah, it's that. So. Uh, our concern is that they're being very irresponsive. That's the our exactly, main yeah. That's the biggest thing. Like I said, you know, I, and I actually, um, you know, weeks ago, but way before I knew about any of this, of course, I had asked the CEO and founder of uh, Dwala to appear as a guest, and I got an email. You know, you politely declined or whatever. But um, you know, and I, I've also seen interviews and things where he was directly asked about Bitcoin because, I mean, this startup. You know, the, when, the, when the vast majority of your business is two customers and it's all Bitcoin, which is a, it's got to have blown their mind. They weren't expecting that. Um, but for for them him to like try and distance himself, you know, it, it's just so weird. What what a dilemma they must be in because they're a new startup. They're s set in this huge growth spurt and it's all Bitcoin, and they're trying to distance themselves from their biggest customers. You know, it's just right. weird. I would imagine that right now, Bitcoin isn't nearly as big of a part of their business as it was several months ago. But I mean, Bitcoin, to me, it seems, really gave them a huge bump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be huge. So, um, it's basically, we'll put them on the map. Until, until this broadcast, I wonder, I wonder if Bitcoin will be any of their business after this news hits the streets. Because, I mean, I can't imagine any exchange site can afford to lose 2.5%. And that's just. That's just uh, if they caught it, because yours was 2.5% of your transactions because you were watching it so closely. It could be 
It could be 50% of their Dwala transactions if they're not paying attention, they didn't notice. Right, and hopefully Dwala will do the right thing. Hopefully they'll fix this, they'll make it right, they'll make an announcement, make a statement. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having reversible transactions as long as people know they're reversible. Right. Um, so, I mean, honestly, like, I like a lot of the ideas with Walla, how it works, and how it's supposed to work, and all that. Uh, so hopefully they can fix it and yeah. uh, stay friends. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, you know, just moments ago before the show, you know, I called and they said, no, transactions are not reversible. And, you know, the incommunicado thing, I mean, that's just not right to give out that false information from day one till now and then update your FAQ. Mm -hmm. they, in all these meetings in the last two weeks, they haven't had time to talk to you, but they had, a, they had time to, to update their support pages to say, like, Retroactive. Seems like they're changing a lot of things retroactively, you know. And that's then, just not right. In the email, he even stated he spoke to the COO, and that's one of the yeah. person that's been unreachable. Yeah, within the last three minutes of the time I hung up over there, and we recorded it, and then I came in here and sat down, I got an email that he had spoken to the COO after that call. That means he was sitting right next to him or something. He was, like, right there accessible. And, and for, you know, for them to be avoiding your calls, it's just unforgivable, really. I mean, honestly, I've done that before where I've been at a job and I don't want to speak to a customer. I tell them no, but, you know, one thing is, you know, a $50 service. Another yeah. thing is, you know, $27,000 or $37,000 discrepancy. Yeah, and when you're the CEO of a company and you're talking, you're not talking about five minutes or, or even five hours. You're talking about, five, you know, what, two weeks? How long has it been you've been trying to reach them? Well, I mean, we, we, we brought it up about, we started it, what, originally two weeks ago, yeah. but I mean, we've been really pushing it, and it went the last three days. With, uh, Thursday of last week. So yeah. I believe it's when we really started pushing it. Okay. Well, of course, we hope that they learn from this lesson. We always hope for the best. And, uh, you know, we hope that they, that they get their act together because this is a, a huge percentage of their business and this is giving them a really bad name to, to go uh, incommunicado and that they resolve these issues. Um, but somebody's going to, somebody's screwed because if those well, fraudsters yeah. pulled the money and you've already given out the yeah. Bitcoin, somebody's I should, I should screwed. also say somebody's got to make up the money. And, yeah. And who, you know, where is the... Where's that going to come from? Office, you know, our exactly. system, you know, we caught the error in their system. Yeah. So what? What's and it's it's going to it's a lot of money and and anybody who's automated is going to have the same problem. We are they going to? I mean, I hope they're well funded CSVs and that they can cover those the losses. Same system. Yeah. Yeah. And they said everybody was getting the same CSVs from the same system. There was yeah. no preferential CSVs. There was no custom CSVs. Right. Everybody's go, coming off the same methodologies. So yeah. we'll we'll see where they go yeah. from here. They might come out. They might say, you know what, we had some errors and we will reimburse everyone and we'll take care of this. And Boy, if they I do that, so. then great. That'd be the right thing to do, and that would uh, look really favorably upon them. What was that last thing? What was it? Oh, I mean, that would just be great if they came out and they said, hey, we made some mistakes, and we'll fix it. And if they make everything right. Yeah, let's hope so. The merchants and uh, go forward from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's hope so. Um, we've, uh, we've got like two minutes left. Is there anything you want to leave us with until next time? <laughs> I, I think mean, you said it all. News. It's like, what is there to say? I mean, oh my I mean, God, I mean, another uh, disaster. To promote ourselves a little bit here. Just uh, head over to the blog for all the newest updates and everything. We're we're going to make a lot more changes. Things are coming quick and fast now. So, mm -hmm. tradehillblog.com, um, mm. Twitter, of course, only one TV is a great source. Um, use Bruce's referral code so he can benefit from uh, <laughs> from the viewership. Um, that's about it. I think. Yeah. Uh, Okay. You got any questions? Any questions that anybody wanted to hear in the chat room? Uh, they're no, they're having all kinds of conversations about all kinds of things. But no, <laughs> and actually, we we're, we're we've got one minute left, so we're out of time. But anyway, thanks for giving us the uh, the exclusive and, and and talking with us about this you know really important issue to the you know that affects everyone in the whole Bitcoin world, and uh, a lot of people are going to have to really think this through and and and. Uh, make their own decisions of what they're going to do and how they're going to act accordingly. And we are out of time, but thanks you, thanks you guys for joining us. And thank you for bringing this uh, to the attention of the public. As, exactly. That's right. Yeah, as quickly as you could. So, all right. Thanks, guys. And uh, we appreciate you being here. And we'll see you tomorrow, 2 p.m. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Cohorts there. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, Adam Stradling and Francisco Dagnino. Okay. Dagnino.
And you know. And you know. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So um, tell us, guys. Tell us what's happening. Okay. Uh, basically, um, by doing our own internal audits, uh, we found out that Dwala is reversible. And uh, not only is it reversible, they don't tell you. So essentially, uh, over time, our statements have been changing. And uh, we wrote a program. Actually, did you write that or Mike? Uh, both of us. OK, together. Exactly. Together, they wrote a program mm -hmm. that basically parses over time all of our Dwala statements and detects anomaly, anomalies and changes in the statements. So um, we found out that Dwala has basically secretly taken back $37,000 out of our accounts which is um, users that made a transfer and it was showing credited in our system and then Dwala, without telling us, just pulls the money back. Um, so we asked Dwala and we said, is, is a, are there chargebacks? And they said, no. Uh, we said, are they reversible? And they said, no. So, um, so we asked them about this and they, they basically ignored us and just blew us off. Um, so we approached them two weeks ago when we first started tracking transactions. Yeah. And these transactions went from credited which means we're supposed to go ahead and put the money in our accounts back to pending. And anybody who's automated off of Dwala right now has been dealing with the same thing for the last two months. Because otherwise you have to go through manually on every single one. And people might have been wondering why things have been taking longer at Trade Hill. Well, that's why. Over the last two and a half weeks, we've been looking at every single Dwala transaction. We've created watch lists of these specific types of fraud that we see. And then all our guys are, watch, are, are using the watch list of the transactions that we see to be suspicious because we identified this and then we're blocking that, okay? And we didn't come out right away because we weren't sure it was them. So we wait and saw and collected information, caught some of these scammers today. And we actually asked Walla for the last two weeks about specific transactions to give us data. And they've given us the runaround every single time. Exactly. We've tried to work with Walla. And we've tried to cooperate with them. We've sent them emails. We've called them. And they just ignored us the entire time. Yeah. We are, they're obviously, their second largest customer. Yeah. Their largest customer is Mount Gox. Uh, between us and Mount Gox, I would estimate we're 90 something percent of their volume, and they are willing to ignore us. Yes, yeah. In, in over two weeks, and we sent a specific transaction IDs, and they just said, "Go to the statements. Go to the statements. Whatever's on the HTML is what you get." Well, those change over time, and we're, we're not even talking about what goes from pending to credited back to pending. Today's episode of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN, and Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com, and TradeHill.com, and MTGox.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is episode 28. I am Bruce Wagner, as and you know. And this is Manny Mena. And today we have uh, breaking news in the Bitcoin world. You know, as always, we're bringing it to you as it happens live. So we're doing a special edition um, at uh, whatever it is, 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Um, with us, we have the gang from Trade Hill, Jared Kenna. And, and Jared, you want to introduce your seeing this. Uh, initially, we just thought, hey, this is, this is our fault. We're, we're screwing something up here. Mm -hmm. um, so we dug a little deeper, and we spent a lot of time thinking it was our mistake. Because if you audit based on their spreadsheets and their data, which continuously changes, it makes it look like you had a mistake. So, so basically, we tracked their data over time and uh, found out it's actually on their end. So... <sighs> At this point, we've been in touch with them, and they told us, and we have this, uh, we have documentation from them that says, if you receive an email from us saying it's credited, if you receive a CSV from us, it's credited. So we've been treating it as such and selling bitcoins to people. Now, after we implemented this system, we caught twenty-seven thousand dollars worth of fraud and prevented it. Uh, we've stopped people from doing this. Um, People are doing it on purpose. People have realized that there's a flaw in Dwala's system and that they can take back the transactions via ACH, and they're, they're specifically trying to game the system. And we have evidence from speaking to these scammers or trying to speak to them 
Because once we figured out how they were doing it, we started blocking them and telling them they had to go on phone calls with us if they wanted us to approve their transactions. All of them declined, came up with horrible excuses, and then pulled back. Mm. seeing transactions completely disappear from our June statement. Right. Okay? That's a completely different error. So we, we, we've identified three different, at least three different types of errors that are occurring. Right. Two or three of them are fraud that people are perpetrating. The other two or three are just, we don't even know. We don't even know how they're happening. Exactly. Exactly. Just, okay. Transactions are coming and going, coming and going. Let me, let me, uh, let me just reiterate, I mean, uh, 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 give a little executive summary, first of all, because <laughs> there's a lot of information here. Um, so l tell me if I phrase this uh, correctly, that what is happening, what you're saying is happening is that Dwala is uh, processing trans transactions into Trade Hill and probably other merchants like Mt. Gox and so on. And then they give you a statement saying these transactions are pending and then these transactions have cleared. And then what's happening is the transa the, these statements are online in the form of a CSV file. And then they are actually retroactively changing the data on these reports. So the transactions that have said they were cleared are now suddenly not cleared anymore. They're pending exactly. again. Exactly. It's normal to go from pending to credited. It's not normal to go from credited to pending. Yeah. Right. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. And have you received any communication?